Where are you going hunting this year? Maybe you're leaving the state. Maybe you're leaving the country. Maybe you're chasing a big kudu bull, or maybe you're trying to get your turkey slam on this year. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from and what your passion is. What are you going to pursue in 2019? Hi, my name is Dustin Apple, and this is The Outdoor Mentor, the archery channel dedicated to making you a better sportsman and ultimately a more successful hunter. We just got back from the 2019 Archery Trade Show, and man, what an awesome event. Join me as I, you know, go through all the interviews, and we're going to have an awesome time. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. This is an archery community, and it wouldn't be the same without you. Now let's get into the video. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Archery Trade Show. Archers, manufacturers, and dealers from around the world have come to Louisville, Kentucky. This is a worldwide event. We're very happy to be here and uh, look forward to having an awesome show. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hit the showroom floor. Thanks for joining me. Hey guys, welcome back to the 2019 Archery Trade Show. And we come in the Bee Stinger booth, one of my favorite stabilizers. And we're gonna to talk to Tim today about the importance of picking the right stabilizer for your setup. Yeah, stabilizers is, you know, one of those really misunderstood topics. I agree. And the reason I, I know people are not being taught correctly is our number one seller is a six inch four hunter. And it really just doesn't have much stabilizing effect at all. Right. Um, it's a little bit of mass weight, does a little bit, but you know, if you're stabilizing your bow right, it's gonna really benefit your setup, it's gonna benefit you as an archer. You know, when I was introduced to uh, Bee Stinger uh, by Greg Poole, and it's been several years ago, I'd already won several national championships, and, and it was just a big eye-opener, and, and it's been an education ever since. You know, it's one of the things that I tweak all the time to try to help myself become a better archer, help me hold better. Uh, in a hunting scenario, it's basically the same, you know, principles of target stabilization. It's just the fact that we don't want to carry a... 30 inch stabilizer out in the woods so we you know we're, it's a trade-off we still yeah. have the benefit we still have the need of wanting to you know stabilize you know the site you know, we use you know systems like this uh, like this new uh, micro hex counter slide here this is our kind of creme de la creme uh, counter slide this does a good job of offsetting the weight of the site and the quiver you can bring it in and out you can move it forward and back so you can adjust your stabilizer based on where you apply pressure. Now there's companies out here that, you know, teach people to neutrally balance their bows and that's that's not correct. You, know, you wanna be balancing the bow based on where you apply pressure. If you have 12 pounds of holding weight because you're shooting an 80% let off bow, you're not gonna want much weight in the front, you're right. gonna want more mass weight in the rear. If you're doing what I do, say to my tournament bows, I'm running more like a one to two ratio of weight front to back and, but I'm holding 22 pounds. So that helps steady all that weight up. It gives me some leverage to hold it up straight. Um, most hunting bows are high let off. Guys want that ability to hold longer on an animal. Sure. So, you know, a system like this, you can really play with the weights front to back. I'd encourage you guys to get extra weights. Um, they come with just a minimal amount of weights and nothing does a better job of offsetting this in this counter slide system. We have other systems you know, behind us here, like the, uh, the Sport Hunter Extreme that was real popular. It's a two-part system that basically mimics a target stabilizer system yep. just in a shorter length. That's another option that works extremely well. If you're going to run a single bar system and that's what you want to run, I really don't think there's a better stabilizer on the market than a Pro Hunter. There's nothing that you can put on a guy's bow and you see instant feedback better than a Pro Hunter stabilizer. They just they work very, very well. So. The biggest thing for me that I think people don't quite understand is, okay, I'm a hunter, so I'm gonna be in a hunter frame of mind. I can pick anywhere from a six inch to a 12 inch stabilizer, and I'm probably gonna be able to go through the woods, you know, re relatively smoothly with that. But if I'm only shooting a six inch weight, I may need, or a six inch stabilizer, I may need a little bit more weight versus that 12 inch stabilizer that puts the weight further out front. And 
a, you can tune both for your application. Sure, yeah, it's, it's called moments of inertia. We're trying to create moments of inertia. And that's simply being put, I mean, you've never seen a guy walking across you know, a tight wire with a little short rod, right? Right. There's a reason for that. You know, he wants to cancel the motion in the middle. Now, if he were to put a short rod with a whole ton of weight on it, it would have the same effect of a longer rod with less weight. Okay, so it's kind of like, I put it this way, if you're a guy crawling up in a tree, you can handle a lot heavier bow. Okay, so using a two bar system that, that puts a lot of mass weight in the bow on the front and the back is going to be more beneficial for you, um, especially under the moment of truth. You know, when that sure. deer's got your nerves rattled, nothing is going to help you like mass weight. No. If you're a guy out west and you're hunting elk, you may not want to pack that kind of weight. So right. then you tend to go, when you watch some of Levi and Morgan shows and stuff, he runs a, like a, sometimes a 20 inch front bar. You know, he's wanting to run a lighter bar so he goes longer. And you can go to these like counter slides in a 15 inch, uh, which are pretty popular. So it gives you a little bit longer bar. Sure. Um, you can you can you can custom make your your own setups out of our target bars for hunting if you really choose to. Yeah. Um, we make them in 10, 12, and 15 inches. So 20 inches, 24 inches. You know, the sky's the limit as to what you can do on your hunting boat. It's just basically hunting is about portability. Okay. Yep. So you have to make the decision yourself as to what you want to port around in that and you get your stabilization based on mass weight length. So. I, I tell people to pick a length, whatever length that you want, and then, like you said, get a, get a weight kit and start messing with it. Yes. If you can come to draw and, and, you know, get a solid anchor and move your pin up and down, yep. you know, without a whole lot of resistance, right. then you're probably pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. Yep. If it's dragging you down, really, if you're, you're, your pin's dragging below the spot, you've probably got too much mass weight, or you need to move the center of gravity to the rear. Yep. Okay. And just so, like you said, you want to get it to where you can shoot as much mass as weight as you can handle, and you're not having to, like, exert yourself to get it up into the spot, because what's happening there is you're going to be using a lot of muscle force, and you'll end up pushing it right through the dot and missing that. So, yep. you know, it's just something you're going to have to play with. You, you know, if you, if you delve into, like, tournament archery and, and take the top 10 guys, you're going to see 10 different stabilizer rigs. Sure. And that's because one size doesn't fit all. Sure. And, you know, the principles are the same. Okay, you got a really stiff, rigid bar with weight on the ends of it. Okay. In, in the in the B Singer line, uh, we do things like, you know, you got the new counter slides this year. We got them in the tan colors to, you know, match your bows and stuff. But this counter slide bar, has a, a unique material to it. It's got a, a counter belt material that it is a dampening material. It's stuff they use in, in jet fighter wings. We use it in some of the field hockey sticks and really? things like that to dampen vibration. So it does have some technical value to it too. You move over here to the target bars. Um, you know, it's an attractive bar. It's a, it, it's a very good bar for dampening. Yeah. And it's really, it's not quite as stiff as like our Premier Plus line, you know, and it's all relative. When you get up to that high level competition, you know, you start to see the little tiny things matter. The difference between a, a, a Premier Plus, which is a really high module strap bite bar at a larger diameter, you can only get so stiff at a given diameter without really upping the cost, sure. you know, exponentially. So, yeah. you know, there's just lots of options of stabilization. The Bee Stinger system is really good because we're using really flat, thin weights, so it doesn't really change the length of the bar when you add a weight to it very much. So yep. length is a big adjustment. Oh yeah, uh, very you'll, important. You'll see it on the end of a long bar a lot. Yep. On a short bar, you're not going to really see the effect dramatically like you will on say a 30 or 33 inch hunting or target yep. bar. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this little segment. Bee Stinger's got a wide range of different styles and shape stabilizers. You've got to pick what's most important to you. It's not all about pretty colors, but hey, if it is for you, Bee Stinger's got you covered. Uh, a wide variety of stabilizers. Tim, I really appreciate the discussion today, and uh, I hope we help somebody out there in the archery world. Sure. Yeah. Great deal. Thanks. Thanks, bud. I really appreciate it.